What's going on, YouTubers? Welcome back. This is RC and Around America, and today we're putting the drive shafts and the axles onto the skid plate. So, come on with me, and let's get her together. Now, everybody knows building drive shafts aren't exactly the most funnest thing ever, but you want to know what? We'll get the front drive shaft done, then I'll time lapse the rear drive shaft, and then we'll get the it all put together onto the chassis. So, with that being said, let's dig in. You're going to want to use the short one for up front and the long one out back. The rear drive shaft's just a little bit longer than the front. So, You have a little bit of Loctite on the M3 bite, insert it into the female part of the dryer shaft, make sure it fits to the hole, take the male part, stick it into the end, and you tighten her in, you don't want to do this both ends. Next, you take this, put a little bit of grease on it. Get all greased up. Take the cross pin. Got ahead of myself. Go ahead. Put that pivot in there. Make sure your holes line up with your slots. Put your drive pin in. And I got ahead of myself again. I'm just really trying to get excited to get this truck done for y'all. Now this part's a little tricky. Kinda gotta get it all lined up. There we go. Put one of the covers on it. Make sure your holes line up with your two different holes on the end of your dryer shaft. So, now we'll repeat for the other side. A little bit of grease. Get her put in. Get your holes lined up. Drop the pin in. Make sure these holes line up as well. Insert your center section. Now, I always try to line up where you can kind of tell where they cut it off from the parks tree. I like to line those up as best as I can without all the parts falling off, of course. And that also help by doing that with dry shaft wobble. They don't line up, it's out of balance, and it tends to vibrate and wobble. And it's really annoying because it makes your truck not so smooth. So let's get the rear one driven, rear one built. All right, as you can see, we got all the major components, the front axle, the back axle, the skid plate, and the dry shaft. So let's get the front, the parts on the 
and then part, front parts of the drive shaft onto the transmission, and then we'll get it all put together. So, with that, go ahead and line up everything, and make sure you can have you have easy access. That your holes line up. Now go ahead and take a dab a lock pack. Don't need a lock. And once everything's lined up, oh, I can move it a little bit. Go ahead and thread it in. So it stops. And then you're good. And repeat for the back. But before I put the other parts of the drive shaft on, I'm actually going to install the axles. Because that to me would just be a little bit easier than fighting all the different parts of the drive shafts while you're trying to put them on. So let's get the front axle put on. Going to install the upper links first. And the way I like to set up my trucks, I like the front end to pop up really easy. For me, that's just my preferred driving style. But to you guys, if you notice, there's multiple upper link holes. So you can go ahead and put it where, whichever way you want to, depending on how your driving style is. For me, I just like that front end to kind of bite down and have the rear end where it doesn't do it so much. So, let's take the M3x14. Get it lined up with the link. Do the same thing for the other side. Now one unique feature I do like about this truck is the lower links are held in by one screw. So let's get everything lined up. Let's get the right driver too. Line up the first link. Get that second link in there. Everything being brand new, it's just tight fit. Once you got it all lined up, it'll slide through, and then just tighten it down a little bit, not too much. I'd say that was about 10 turns, and then go ahead and finish off by installing the rest of your front dryer shift. For me, I found out lifting the front axle up just a little bit. Help slide the dryer shaft in. Spin it just a little bit to line up. There we go. And then we're going to take our set screw, dab the lock tight, and tighten it in. And since the rear end is the same way, put you on time lapse and we'll get her done. And 
And as you can see, here we are. Dry shafts are in. Axles are mounted. And real quick, the reason why I put my upper links here is, and it's different than the front, is like I said, my front, I just want my front to pivot like this. Helps with biting in my personal driving style. But the rear, I didn't want my rear to just kind of flip up like that. I wanted my rear to force the truck down. So by doing that, I put the links all the way at the top to help push the front of the truck down to help the front tires to bite and grab a little bit better when it's climbing. So everybody's different, but that's my that's my driving style and why I do it. So if you have a different way or you have an idea of what you think might work better, let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.